one thing to know about polynomials is that whenever you graph a polynomial, the curve is always going to be smooth. And what I mean by smooth is that if you have some curve and then it comes to a point like this, if your graph is pointy, then it is not smooth. That's the best like qualitative way I can describe it. So what this means is if you are really looking at a polynomial function and you're looking at the graph, then it should not contain any of these points, right? So that's not allowed. You're not allowed to have pointy parts of your graph. A polynomial curve is always smooth. The other thing is a polynomial curve is always continuous. And so if you were looking at the graph of a function and it looks like this, right, where there's some sort of gap, a lot of times we see like vertical gaps in different functions, um, this is also not allowed because what I mean by continuous Continuous means that you can draw the whole graph without ever picking up your pencil, right? So you can draw the whole thing from left to right without ever having to pick up your pencil or pen. And so you can't ever have these sort of vertical gaps happening in your function. That's what we would call a discontinuity. And for a polynomial function, you never have discontinuities. Does that make sense? So these polynomial curves are going to be pretty straightforward. Um, the next thing we'll talk about is what we call end behavior. End behavior is what happens if you go very far to the left or very far to the right whenever you're looking at the graph of your function. And it depends on two things. It depends on the degree of your polynomial and it depends on the leading coefficient. Now, by the way, the degree of your polynomial, that just means what is the greatest exponent. Um, and then the leading coefficient is just what multiplies oh, multiplies, that should be an S. Uh, x to the n power, where that's the greatest exponent. Those are kind of clunky definitions, but let me give you an example. If I have the function y equals negative 3 x to the fifth plus 4x minus 2, what is the degree of that example polynomial? 5. Yeah, this would be a degree 5 polynomial because the greatest exponent that I see is 5. What is the leading coefficient? Negative 3. Yeah, so uh, the definition is kind of hard to say. It's kind of a mouthful, but um, it's not so bad if you actually look at examples. Okay, what about this example in green? What's the degree? Yeah, this is a fourth degree. The degree is four in green. And then what's the leading coefficient? I mean, one seventh. One seventh, yeah. Okay, so that's the idea behind degree and leading coefficient. Now, what really matters is whether the degree of your polynomial is even or odd and whether your leading coefficient is positive or negative. So if your leading coefficient is positive and 
the degree is even, then as you go really far to the left, your function is going to go up, and as you go really far to the right, your function is going to go up. If the leading coefficient is positive and the degree of your polynomial is odd, then if you go far enough to the right, your function is going to be going up, and if you go far enough to the left, your function will be going down. If your degree is even and your leading coefficient is negative, your end behavior is down on the left, down on the right, then there's only one more combination we can use. If your leading coefficient is negative and the degree of your polynomial is odd, then it'll be up on the left, down on the right. And this is so important to know, um, just to remember this table here. Uh, like you're likely going to miss a lot of questions on your next exam if you don't have this memorized in some shape or form. So my, my recommendation to you is really, really memorize this and then whenever you get your exam booklet, then write this on the front of your exam booklet before you even answer any questions, before you even open the exam, just like jot this on the front so that you can just brain dump it. And then when you need it later, as you're working questions in the exam, you can flip back to the front and you can reference this. But this should definitely be something you have memorized. Uh, you know, no question. Personally, I do not have this table memorized. But the way that I remember this every time I have to teach a class is I think of what is the simplest example of all of these cases. And if I have to come up with an example that has positive leading coefficient and even degree, one really simple example is y equals x squared. And I know that y equals x squared has a graph that looks like this. It's a little upward facing parabola. And so that's how I remember that in behavior case. If I need a polynomial with odd degree and positive leading coefficient, I think about the polynomial y equals x. Because x is the same thing as x to the 1 power, so your largest exponent is 1, and that means the degree is 1, and 1 is an odd number, so that, that works for this case, right? And so the graph y equals x is a diagonal line that looks like this. And so that's how I remember that case for the end behaviors. Then in this box, an even degree but negative leading coefficient, that could be a simple example like y equals negative x squared. And so that would just be a parabola that faces down, like a frowny face. And then lastly, whenever I think about an odd degree negative leading coefficient, I can think about y equals negative x, which is this line that goes down from left to right. So again, whenever I was like reproducing this table for you guys a second ago, what I was actually thinking in my head is I was remembering these very, very simple cases. And if you can remember a simple case of each one, you know that every other polynomial with the same even odd degree or the same positive negative leading coefficient has to have the same in behaviors if you go far enough to the left and far enough to the right. So that stuff stays true even for higher degree polynomials that it may be more complicated. So do you all feel good about this, this table? Okay. Let me ask you a question then. If I have the example y equals negative one third x to the fourth plus five x cubed minus two x. If I go far enough to the right, am I going up or down? Yes. If I go far enough to the right, you're going down. If I go far enough to the left, am I going up or down? To the left side in behavior. Yes, also down. Yep. This would be a case where I have a negative leading coefficient but an even degree. Right? So my degree is four, my leading coefficient is negative one third. And so this would be down on the left, down on the right. And 
I mean, I'm sure you guys believe me, but I like to personally, I like to graph stuff to remember what it looks like. And so if we tried to graph negative one third x to the fourth, oops, plus five x cube minus two x. I, I was worried for a second because I was like, oh, that looks like it's down on the left, up on the right. But no, if we, if we scroll out far enough, uh, it really is uh, down on the left, down on the right. Okay. So I will definitely ask you a question, maybe even two or three questions on your exam about this, where I give you some sort of example polynomial function, and then you have to know... What is the end behavior? What happens if you go far enough to the left? What happens if you go far enough to the right? Okay. This, this end behavior discussion, it doesn't tell you at all what happens in between, right? It only tells you about what happens at the end, but anything could happen in between, right? The left and the right side it could go up, it could go down, it could turn several times. Um, but at least you know about the end behaviors.